whenever I make a video using the scope, I get many questions about it. And mainly, they bought it and they want a tutorial on how to use it. Use it. So, I only use the scope for like quick things like can it works and you know, just to see if there's a signal, yes or no, not like to actually analyze the signal. Like I'm not gonna use it to do a crank, can and crank correlation or using a pressure transducer. But for basic things, I think it's a really good scope. It's two channels. It costs about uh, around $130. Um, very important, it does not come with automotive style leads. It comes with like the other type that, you know, like one, one lead with a ground lead coming off it. So you're gonna have to buy your own lead if you want an automotive lead or if you have from another scope. This is a Pico lead, which is kind of expensive, but you can buy hand tech mix leads or this is a lead by a company called, I can't remember, Martin Lauren, I think. Uh, they sell a scope that connects to a uh, tablet. I don't know. The, the Gadgets Playlist, the YouTube channel, he's very into it. So they seem like high quality leads and they're really cheap. They come from China, I think, so it took some time to get here. But it does have, um, it doesn't have stackable banana leads, so. It's a little bit of, you know, annoying to use if you want to stack on top of it. Um, hand tech makes leads on Amazon, you can also get. But, all right, so in short, it has two channels and right now I'm on one channel and hopefully you can see, I'm trying to get the glare out from the light. So I can't see the camera and the screen at once, but hopefully there's no glare. So each little box here, that's what I'm gonna call it, that's a division. So right now we're set to the bottom, 10 millivolts per division. That means each one of these little boxes is 10 millivolts. To raise that, you click volts, and that will go higher. Now it's 20 millivolts. Now it's 50, 100, 200, 500, a volt, two volts, five volts, 10 volts. And you push millivolt, it will bring it all the way down to 10 millivolts of division. Now the boxes going this way is time. So right now it's set to five um, milliseconds. So if we click second, the S button, which stands for seconds, it will go up to 10 milliseconds, 50, 100, 200, 500, one second, two seconds, five seconds, and 10 seconds. Then you go all the way down with the nanosecond button next to it. Now we're in the microseconds. It goes all the way down to nanoseconds, I think. So this is 10 nanoseconds, then this is microseconds and then milliseconds and then seconds. So that's pretty much the time and the voltage. Now there's two channels here. So you have channel one, if you hold this button for, I don't know, a few seconds, it will turn on the second channel. That's the green over here. But we're still controlling channel A, or sorry, they call it channel one. So if you push it again, now you're controlling channel two. So now you see if I move that button, if I move the arrows, it moves the zero line up from channel one from channel two now if i want to go back to channel one just push the button again and now we're on channel one there we go there's a zero line so you can always move the zero line up you know depending on how you want to fit the waveform in especially if you're doing like a what do you call it uh sine wave a ac voltage sine wave like for a wheel speed sensor or a crankshaft sensor with a two wire so it goes from positive to negative so you don't want it centered so that you'll see the whole peak to peak um so this scope was made by a company called leolov officially that's where i bought it from it said the leolov store on amazon but it seems like they don't make it anymore and if we look here this is the same exact scope but it's sold by maker hawk store so in my amazon store this was the original one from leolov but if you click buying options it says it's unavailable now, um, I don't know. I, I think it's the exact same thing. I didn't actually try it, but I'm assuming it's the exact same thing. Everything looks the same. The specs, it comes in the same case with the same probes. Um, uh, yeah. All right. So now, let's just to show you, try this on regular voltage. So I got here a power supply. I'm just going to connect the scope. Oh, 
Okay, I'll just put back rubs on it. Just a clip. All right, let me shut off channel two. Okay. We're at 10 millivolts, let's raise the voltage. We're gonna put it on, let's say, two volts of division. And 100 will make it faster, so. Or more time on the screen. So now we're at two seconds, let's go back to. We'll go to 500 milliseconds at two volts. So now, put this on the power, this on the ground. Okay, we're at 12.4 volts over there. Let's raise the voltage because we're off the screen. So now at five volts, and you see we got a line right there. And if you look here, I have the, the max at 12 volts and the min at 11.6. That's just how it does it, this min max. And you could set whatever you want. You could set, um if you go to the menu, so like the first one on channel one, it's gonna tell me I could switch it to AC and DC. Um, so I would push this A, now it's on AC coupled, now it's on DC coupled. And if you push the down, um, this button will bring it to the probe. So you can put on one time probe, a 10 time probe, or a 100 time probe. Now to move the tabs over, you push the up button. So now I'm in measurement. So I could, whatever I want, I can have frequency, amps, max, min, peak to peak, duty on the bottom of the screen. It just helps you, you know, when you're seeing something. Push it up again, you have the trigger, you could change it to auto, normal, rise and fall. The display is just the brightness. I don't know what all these stuff are. Here's calibration stuff and set. Okay, you could set the auto shutdown and the sound. You could switch it from China to, Chinese to English. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, I really just use the scope for very simple stuff. I use it like a multimeter and I don't know all the you know complicated settings in this but i don't use it for that so for what i use it for i find it very easy to use and really quick like i'll show you on a can at work so let me just get right here i have a breakout box that i made for i use this for when i'm cloning stuff so i can plug my cloning tool in and let's say i'm plugging my scan tool in now because that's what i have here now let's just find the computer. So this is a E39 computer. So I have my box of connectors that I made. Here's the E39 one. Plug the head up over here. All right now I can turn on the battery and the ignition. So it shows we have 320 milliamps going through this. So it means this thing's alive. Let me just turn on the scan tool just to make sure. Auto scan, then picking it up. All right, we got a Chevy truck. We have a VIN number, 2012. Okay, perfect. So we're communicating with this computer. So now let's say I have here my scope. Now this is just a breakout on the top of the box. I just made a breakout, can high, can low, a power and ground. So I'm gonna go to ground over here and can high first. Okay, let's lower the vaults. So now we got something on the screen, but it's very, you know, we can't really see the packet. So now we're gonna go to, we're gonna, you know, go faster. So we're gonna go to nanoseconds. All the way down. We're at 20 microseconds. And now we got a nice pattern. So we're on auto trigger. So right here, we got a very nice pattern. It looks like a good can network. We got from two and a half to Three and a half, you see the max is at like three and a half or almost a four because the spikes. The min's at 2.4, which is close enough. Um, now, actually, is this turned on the 120 ohms? If I turn this on, I'll just clean it up a bit. Yeah, so it did clean it up a bit because you see in here I have a 120 ohm resistor that I could turn on to make it 60 ohms because the computer already has 120 ohms, but sometimes you have. 120 ohms is fine, the scans will be able to read, but if it has no ohms, let's say you're reading a BCM which doesn't have any. Um, 120 ohm resistor in it, so I could just turn this guy on and it'll give at least 120, and then I could read the BCM. I think also Chrysler, sometimes when you're programming, it needs the 60 ohms. Um, 
uh, you see, this is the perfect thing. Now we can add another channel over here, so we'll push channel. Turn on channel two. Let me get this lead. We'll, put, we'll just jump the grounds. See why you need stackable. Comes in handy. We'll go to can low. And its peak is, where's the men? I don't have it on here, but. There we go. We have a beautiful can network. And, you know, the resolution is not, when you're using both channels, it's not as good, so you don't see as many of the spikes. And I'm looking at it on a really fast speed. I'm at 20 microseconds. So, you know, but this is perfect for diagnosing networks. Because, I, I don't know, you know, they have all the can network decoders and people are using data sniffers. I, I don't know, that's way above me. I don't see how that ever helped anyone fix a car. I think it just complicates things, to be honest. And you just want to see if you have a good network or not. Usually you can just look at it. Another trick, if you want to see, let's say you have a lot of noise from a throttle body on a GM. So you could just jump... Instead of putting one to ground, let's say just take both channels or take one channel and go across both of them. So now you, you're looking at A minus B, literally what the computer is looking at. I'm just going to raise, wait, let me just turn off channel two and raise channel one. Now that is what the computer is saying. So it might look very jumpy on your screen because you have noise, but if you just go A minus B, you're seeing, you're minusing off can low from can high, you're seeing what the computer is saying. Now this is a very good tip, but you could get messed up. There's times where you'll have like nothing on one, and I've seen it happen once where one network one was bad and it was still giving me a good signal across. So you want to just check the other way, but you want to might want to just jump to ground for a second each one just to make sure there's something there. But once you have something there, you can put them together and totally fine. Now about this setup with the um, with the harnesses, I just wanted to think this is from a website. He, it's called Custom ECM. He sells them. He sells the harnesses. He makes his, a box, which he sells. And, you know, he sells the head unit. He has for Chrysler, Ford, GM, transmission modules, a bunch of stuff. He even makes connectors that go connected to your Go Diag if you want. Or if you have, like, I think Kess and I don't know, all the other ones. He makes harness for everything. So I bought from him, too. And then he, I found over here he has DIY bench harness which he takes you through making it yourself. And he even shows bench harness pinouts on all the computers. So he does all the work and he gives it to you for free. So I bought like two from him and then the rest I made myself, but it was really nice of him. But this is a really good website. He has a lot of information there. He even, I think you could send the modules and he'll program them to you. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't go through everything, but you should check this customecm.com. So I made all the GM ones because that's the ones I clone a lot from, you know, I use OBD Star or I have Terminal. It just makes really easy doing it through here. I'm a really big fan of it. I had it for over a year. You know, it charges with a C charger. It has a signal generator, which I've never used. I don't, it has like a, what do you call it? A, it looks like a headphone jack that you plug a different plug in. I have no idea where my plug is and it can make a signal generator. I use other tools for that, but I'm assuming it would work. Um, what else is there to say? You, somehow you could save something here. You could stop the waveform if you want. I have a sick push strong button. Now I'm on auto. So it's it, it's doing an auto. It's on one volt of division and 500 microseconds to make it big. Let's go back here. And move the trigger that way. Okay. So the trigger is the middle thing in the middle where that's why you see if I move it that way, it moves the whole waveform over. But you could stop through it and now, you know, scroll over the waveform. Now there is a button that says save and it says save done, but I have no idea where it saves it to. I never looked into that. I am honestly not saving a waveform from this scope. If I need to save a waveform, I'm using the Pico or maybe my snap on, but not even the Pico if I need to save a waveform. But yeah, that's it for the scope. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the other one, the Maxi Force one. There's one more scope I was looking at, which I didn't buy, but um, this scope looks pretty cool. It is a seven inch touchscreen. And it's $145.99. I'm really tempted to buy it just to just to try it out. <laughs> but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no need for it. I have too many scopes. Um Yeah, I might buy it anyway. It just looks cool. It's touchscreen, it's a tablet. Um you know, 
why not? We'll see. All right. Thanks for watching.